Good morning. How's everybody today? How you blessed and highly flavored? <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a choice. And we choose joy. Amen? We choose surrender. We choose Christ and deny self. All glory. The Bible tells us the world is passing away and all the things in it. So who'd want to be a part of it, right? It'd be a bonehead. Hallelujah. Everyone say we're all temporary <laughs> in this realm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> glory. Just turn to Hebrews 11. Thank you, Master. Hebrews 11. You know, one of the things we want to do is be found worthy of the call that God has given us. Amen? And, you know, so many times we don't realize that If you were to give somebody and say, look, at, you can use my name to go to this place and they know me and get a discount. Amen? Everybody has some kind of connection in some way or another. Where they can use your name because of somebody that you know. And it, and it brings a connection to something. And the Lord put on my heart the other day that many people must use his name. In fact... He said, they don't even ask me if they can use my name. In other words, for me and you, we just think it's automatic and common sense. But there's an area in your relationship with the Lord is there's such sensitivity. Lord, do you mind if I use your name in this? Do you mind if I use your name today? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Because there's times when we begin to drift and we have no right to use his name. And we use his name in vain when we're out of order. Now we call on his name for rescue. Lord Jesus, help me. Amen. But there's a place when, and the only reason why I bring this up, because out of nowhere, out of, I was in prayer, and I heard him say something to me. And he said, you can use my name. And I thought, I didn't know I couldn't. <laughs> you know, I, I, and, and it really struck me, my goodness. Have I taken your name in vain prior without really knowing that I can use your name? You know, because using the name of Jesus represents eternity. It represents creation. It represents everything. Deliverance and healing. Everything. And he wants us to be worthy of using his name. Does that make sense to anybody? So when we get out of line and we know we're, we're not in right with God, my goodness, People try to use his name in vain. Let me share this with you. Anything in the flesh is using his name in vain. Anything of the flesh. If it's not in the spirit, then it's in the flesh. Amen? And if it's not in the spirit, the name, his name is used only in the spirit, not in the flesh. That's why he says, no flesh shall glory in my presence. It's an area where God is 
I want to say tweaking the body of Christ, realigning some areas. He said to me this morning, he said, you know, not enough of my people are renewed in faith. They go through the motion. He, I, I got a lot of motion people, he said. Emotion, emotion and emotional. <laughs> One of the things he's looking for is heart seekers, not men pleasers. Heart seekers. You know, remember faith, we, we already shared with that, is, is forever attached in the heavenlies. <laughs> so when we are renewing our faith, we're renewing our attachment, aren't we? Our connection. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Renewed faith. Do you think we need to renew our faith? Yeah. Renewed faith. And, and again, you know, it says that uh, uh, when, when we're walking in God's presence, we're walking in the level of faith that he's requiring me and you to use his name is not in vain. Does everybody understand that? Again, I just really believe that the Lord is just bringing things more sensitive to us, more clarity, more detail. So we're not using his name in vain. We're not bringing shame to his name. Amen? Faith. Faith. Forever attached in the heavenlies. Verse 1, let's speak it. Verse 11, in chapter 11. Now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things are what? Not seen. So faith has nothing to do with something seen. Physically. Amen? For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So he's calling those things that are not as though they are. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he did what? He pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we must be those who diligently seek him. Not when we feel like it. Not when it's convenient. God builds a, a routine for me and you. And in that routine, it's a part of a foundation building. When you first come into the kingdom, he begins to teach you. He begins to put things in order. In our discipleship, there's a curriculum. Why? So that there's an agenda. There's a divine order. There's a holy order. There's a routine which keeps us renewed. Without routines, you're not renewed. Amen? That's why he says forsake not to assemble. Why? Because then a person can't get renewed. Is everybody Okay. So we see the unseen substance that becomes seen is faith. Because of the connection to the way, truth, and life, <laughs> the character of Christ, renewing our connection all the time. All the time. Renewed faith. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, we go through challenges. In fact, the word says count it all joy, right? Don't be miserable when you're going through stuff. Count it all joy. Why? Those challenges are to increase your faith. 
to, to, they're to do what? Increase our faith. Yes. In verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Renewed faith. By renewing your faith, you're renewing your connection constantly. In verse 1, let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to what? Faithful men who are able to teach others also. Now a faithful person is a person that's filled with faith. They're consistent. Don't tell me you have faith and can't be consistent. That ain't faith. It's double-mindedness. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he does, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the what? To the rules, the guidelines, regulations. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Faithful, level of faith to endure and maintain. You are unchanging. I want to say unchanging. Remember, the enemy comes to challenge your position. You're unchanging in the character and the integrity of Christ. This can only be accomplished by renewing yourself in the presence and the words of God every day. Again, we've talked about this before, about the renewing. And there's such a lack of renewal. In the body of Christ. It's, it's, it's terrible and it's causing so much problem. The lack of renewing. Remember, renew brings refresh. Amen? When you are new, renewed, you bring refresh. There's something else that happens when you are refreshed. Your remembrance of the things of God's promises come to pass. You're remembering what he said. And you're in this renewing which brings refreshing, brings remembrance. It also brings something else, resistance to the enemy. You're able to resist the enemy more, the devil. And by being able to resist, you're able to get in a position to be restored. Restored. There's something that this all brings to us. It's called renewed reality. Everyone say renewed reality. You know, we talk about revival. When a person is revived or in revival, they must maintain a level of renewed in the faith. Amen? A renewed, why? So they can, take, can stay connected and maintain. You know, once the enemy starts diminishing your faith, and you, people don't even know their faith is diminished. They can do all the proclamations they want, and their faith can be diminished. That's one of the things the powers of darkness drain from us, is faith. Then we begin to rely on our own self. It, it, it promotes self-confidence instead of confidence in God. It promotes self-centeredness. When your faith begins to diminish, you begin to promote yourself. You start doing things in your own strength. Your, your, that connection begins to diminish. It, it's almost like a, a strong cord that becomes down to a string. And for so many people, it's broke, and they've fallen from the faith. But God is in a place right now of renewing and restoring. Amen? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. Thank you, dear. Acts chapter 3. Glory. Renewed faith. In verse 18. 
Acts 3.18. Let's speak it. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of his prophets, that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be what? Converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. But he says, repent. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. Now, again, in this, there's a refreshing in God's presence. But you've got to learn to enter his presence. And you enter by faith. Amen. But by in his presence... Is everything. We've talked about this already. I can tell you, I, I, I don't know how much of the body of Christ is not in God's presence. And so many people, were out, we were at a place that we had to do a job at. And uh, we were giving testimony and so forth. And they were just blown away about testimony and this and that and whatever. And uh, once I mentioned uh, about uh, uh, COVID, this false flag virus and, and these masks. Of course, two of them that were sitting at the table had a mask on. And uh, that demon perked up. I'm a Christian. I had to hold myself back. This isn't about Democrats or Republicans. I didn't mention anything about political. <laughs> so obviously you expose yourself. You're a Democrat claiming to be a Christian. And uh, she said, I don't want to hear any of this. She goes, everything was fine until you started talking about this uh, um, conspiracy. I said, first of all, I don't lie. And I don't assume. It's sin. Everything I'm telling you is fact. We know people. My wife is a nurse. And we know doctors. So I will not lie to you. And I left it at that, and so did she. <laughs> but then we got invited back to do more work, you know. <laughs> but I'm just sharing with you. The first thing is, I'm a Christian. Well, if you're a promoter of abortion and same-sex marriage, you ain't a Christian. Bottom line. Because you're supposed to be Christ-like. Amen? If you live a life of fornication, you're not a Christian no matter how many times it comes out of your mouth and what you believe in your head. But when you truly stand before God with a pure heart and clean hands and allow him to expose us, he'll tell you whether he can, you can use his name or not. Amen? Praise God. <laughs> Isaiah 28. Verse 11, Isaiah 28, verse 11. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the what? Refreshing, yet they would what? Not hear or accept. This is called praying in tongues. It brings a rest and it brings a refreshing. If it brings a rest and a refreshing, does it bring a renewing? Yes. Praying in tongues. It's vitally important. People don't see that. There's a rest and refreshing by praying, refreshing by praying in the spirit. In fact, it is the seventh armor of the four, the seventh part of the four armor of God. Amen. So we should be spending time praying in tongues. If you haven't received the gift of tongues, you should seek it and get it. Isaiah 50, or Psalm 51. No, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. What the heck? <laughs> 
1 Corinthians 14. Renew, refresh, remembrance, res resist, restore, and reality. First Corinthians fourteen. Verse one. Pursue love and desire what? Spiritual gifts. But especially that you may prophesy. Do you know when we're singing the words we're prophesying? Or prophetically releasing. The word says that the testimony of Jesus Christ is prophetic. So these words are going forth and is doing something with you or with others. Verse 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to who? To God. For no one understands him. Even the devils don't understand it. However, in the spirit he speaks the mysteries, hidden things of God. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies who? Himself. He edifies himself, so he renews himself by praying in tongues. But he who prophesies edifies the church. But does he say, man, I wish you all spoke with tongues? Because some people just couldn't receive it and didn't want it. But even more that you prophesy, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues. Unless indeed he interprets that, that the church may receive edification. Most prophecy is by interpretation of tongues. So we see we want to edify ourselves. In other words, renew ourselves, refresh ourselves in tongues. Renews, refreshes, rests. And what we're doing is we're actually edifying our, ourself in the faith, the connection again. Edifying. You're bringing renewal. Man, when, you're, when your faith, what is it? In fact, it says if you pray in tongues, you're what? Increase your faith. Pray in tongues, increase your faith. Pray in tongues, increase your faith. So many people reject that gift. It's incredible. And, of course, you can tell they're not walking in faith because they're so about themselves. Hallelujah. John 14. No, let's go to that Psalm 51. Glory to God. Hey, I was taking this message at 4 o'clock this morning or something like that, you know. <laughs> Obviously, Dad wanted me up early. Psalm 51. Verse 10. Psalm 51, verse 10. What does it say? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within. Renew a consistent spirit, unwavering, unmoving. Do not cast me away from your what? Your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Why? Because this is what he realized. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Why? In his presence is restoration. Restore. Renew. Refresh. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will what? Teach transgressions your ways and sinners will be converted to you. Hmm. Renew steadfast, continuous, unchangeable, immovable in the faith spirit. John 14. Renewed faith. Verse 25. John 14, 25. 
Let's speak it. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, from whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will bring to what? Your remembrance. All things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives to, gives to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Wow. So we see here that the Holy Spirit was given to us to guide us and tell us things to come. As we stay refreshed and renewed in the Spirit, things come to remembrance. Things come to what? Remembrance. And what's the purpose of things coming to remembrance? How about God's promises? Things coming to remembrance. So what? Overcome any obstacle from the enemy. <laughs> Too many people get sideswiped because they're not renewed. Amen? Hallelujah. Go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. You know, when there's a renewing and a refreshing and things are coming to remember, so what, one of the things that helps is discerning. You're able to discern things. You're able to discern time. You're able to discern God's will. You're able to discern what's clean and unclean. You're able to discern more. James 2, verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You therefore, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith is working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And a scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that man is justified by works and not by faith alone. There must be a combination. Because works is the fruit of faith. Amen? Everyone say it. Works is the fruit of faith. Glory. Faith without works is dead. It must be renewed. In 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. You know, it takes faith to come and fellowship. It takes faith to assemble. Without faith, you won't assemble. And the longer you stay away from assembling, the further your faith diminishes more and more and more. And you become self-centered, more concerned about you, your feelings and everything else, your life. When you already sold your, you already gave your life to Jesus. Amen. We were bought with a price. I'll tell you, the Lord reminds me of that all the time. Is that your life or mine? Hallelujah. Verse one, First John chapter five, verse one. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves Him, who begot, also loves Him, who is begotten of Him. Verse 2, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. <laughs> For this is the what? Love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments that are not what? Burn. So in other words, we keep his plan. We're focused on his plan, what he commands us to do. Assignments. 
for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So listen, we need to maintain a born-again state of being by being renewed, by being refreshed. Amen? By bringing the, being restored to the remembrance, by being able to resist the devil. For whatever born, is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. Our faith. In this we see we must keep up his plan in action. It is a required and required assignments in his love for me and you by faith. Why? Because faith overcomes all the world's influences. There's a maintaining of a level of renewed faith that you and I must acquire. In 1 Peter chapter 5. Remember, renew, refresh, remembrance, resist, restore, and reality. Our reality must be renewed. 1 Peter chapter 5. And of course, verse 5. Everybody there? Everybody okay? You're quiet today. What's the matter? I didn't make enough mistakes yet or what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, lighten up. Thank you, Master. First Peter 5, 5. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you in due time. Casting your cares upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, alert, be vigilant, consistent because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may deceive or devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith. You think some people aren't re being able to resist because the faith level is in there? Amen. Resist him in the faith, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by everybody. So we're all, we all experience, but some people will not be able to resist, and others will because their faith level is not there. Why? Because the lack of renew. The lack of refresh. Does anybody understand that? Hallelujah. Verse 10, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have been challenged, you suffer a little bit, he, that you may be perfected, established, and strengthened, and that you may be settled. We are to resist the devil steadfast in the faith only by a level of renewed faith, refreshed in his presence, and remembrance of his promises. Amen? Well, then we're able to resist the devil, aren't we? One of the things he likes to restore us in is the joy of our salvation. Restoring us in joy. Look at, we need to renew reality every day. What's real? The things that are not seen. The things that are seen are temporary. In other words, what's reality? Reality is what's really influencing us, not what we think. What's influencing our thoughts? Amen? The devil came out to steal, kill, and destroy, didn't he? He is a thief. In Proverbs 6.30. Proverbs 6, verse 30. Now look at this. Are you there? What does it say? People do not despise the thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving. Okay, so he's got a, in other words, I mean, at that time, people were starving to death. Somebody went and stole a loaf of bread. They would kill them. 
He says this, though. Look at verse 31. What? Yet when he is found, he must restore what? Is the devil a thief? Okay, so this is your proclamation of promise. He's got to restore to you sevenfold, but you better be in position for it to be restored. Yet when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. He may have to give up all the substance of his house. I love it. The thief must be, uh, the, he's got to restore it sevenfold. Anybody ever burn you? Anybody lied to you? Well, that person doesn't have to restore it always. But it's got to be restored somehow. Amen? Somehow. Psalm 103. Especially if the person's in jail, he ain't restoring nothing. Hallelujah. He's just reaping. You know, so many times I, I, things have, um, you know, we've been stolen all kinds of stuff many times, off, over and over. But I just know that it's got to be restored somehow. It doesn't matter. It's like, Lord, I, you, you see it all. You know it all, you know. I, you said that it's got to be restored sevenfold. Somehow, some way, something to that value is going to come back some way. Always does. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not what? All of his benefits, so that means you need to have remembrance, right? <laughs> okay. So many times people forget all God's benefits. They forget that you can be healed. You have a uh, life insurance, health insurance. Amen. Who forgives all your what? Iniquities. Yes. Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction. <laughs> who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I love that part. <laughs> Renew. Yes. That's how this whole thing started, right? We're renewing faith. Now we're renewing youth. Renewing body. Renewing health. We shouldn't be getting older. We should be getting healthier. Amen? It's benefits that we don't want to forget, but the devil loves to steal them if there's not a renewing. You know, you may be convicted on some of the things you're eating these days. Then stop it. Hello. <laughs> I mean, some of the things you're ingesting or whatever it is. Some of the things you're drinking. Too many sodas. Those sodas will kill you. You know, sugar is addictive. It's addictive and it opens the door to an addictive spirit. You got a sweet tooth. You usually got 20 of them. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I love sweet things, but I don't eat them. At least I try to avoid them. Every once in a while, I'll... I used to be a cookie monster. <laughs> Hallelujah. Things change, though, you know? We want to get healthier. We want to get better. Praise God. Psalm 37. People turn from drugs to sugar. And 
And then they get ill and they go, well, I haven't used drugs in a long time. Yeah, you just ate 25 pounds of sugar every year. Psalm 37, verse 3. What does it say? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. For him, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only causes harm. Again, we want to be in a place where we want to renew faith. Everyone say all things are going to work to the good. Now, can it work to the good without faith? No. No. You got to have faith, right? Things are going to work to the good if you're at a level of faith where it's connected and manifested. Remember, faith is your connection. It's where you are. We were born with a measure of faith to get to Jesus. The problem was is the enemy brought up so many lies that our faith was in everything else but Jesus. Our faith was in ourselves. our faith was in our bank accounts and this, our abilities and our talents, this and that, whatever. Never put anything before him. He's first of everything. We must be renewed in the faith. That means connected. Amen? Where there's a renew, there's a refresh. Where there's a refresh, there's a remembrance. Where there's a remembrance, there's a resistance against the powers of darkness. Where there's a resistance, there's a restoration, a restoring to you. And all of this equals a renewed reality. Amen? And re maintaining this new reality, you'll maintain who you are in Christ. And who Christ is in you. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this renewing begin. In every area of our lives, Lord, we ask for revival to come, that people can be revived in the faith, renewed, walking and pleasing you. Lord, help us to get to that place and continue to deny ourselves, that we may follow you all the way home and be submissive to your requests. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.